Today we're leaving the Abacos to go pick up a friend in Georgetown. To start our journey, we're making our way through the Tilu Cut, out to the Atlantic for a 40-hour, 200 nautical mile sail south. Basically through, searching for a little bit deeper water. It won't be hard to find. And this little swell that we have right now should flatten completely out. Than we thought there was going to be, so we're going to go ahead and get some sail out. See what we can do with it. I'll take a stand and walk the line. What's our speed? 5.8, it's not bad. You wanna tell everyone what our plan is to get to Grand Exuma? We're leaving Tilu Cut uh, in the Abacos, which is just a few miles south of Hopetown. We're actually gonna take the crazy way. We're gonna go around the east side of Eleuthera, so I don't have to worry about depths or coral or anything like that. Uh, the weather's supposed to be perfectly calm. The sea state's supposed to be nice and flat. So we're gonna go around the east side of Eleuthera and then down through Eleuthera and Cat Island and then across the Exuma Sound. I didn't subject you guys to watching me make tea because I did make you guys watch me make waffles for like four minutes. Unless something happens, this might be good night. But I guess you never know out here. So we've lost all semblance of any wind that we had. We're down to less than five knots apparent, which means we need to bring the sails in, uh, just go on motor from now on. But since I have to go outside, I have to wake Jess up. Hey Jess, uh, we gotta bring the sail in. Can you come up? No camera. Okay. I'm going back to bed. Night. Radar and Charles are still in bed. It is about seven o'clock. Um, night watch went great. We have really fallen into it, which is something I never thought would happen. This is the sixth time we've done overnight passages. And if you have been watching for a while, you've seen how stressed I was about the first couple. I'll put links in the description to all five of those below if you're interested in seeing them. We didn't have any time to prepare for leaving today. Um, we just kind of decided within a day, like, it's time to move on, we need to go. So maybe it was just not having the time to fret about it. Maybe it's the mindfulness, maybe just getting used to it, but it's pretty incredible what your body can adapt to. I'm feeling so positive and happy this morning. Kind of cracking up about Charles' solutions on making sure the bar didn't cr like make noise while we were sleeping. Just looking at it out of the corner of my eye and <laughs> some koozies and some tea towels and the dog's life vest. Not making a sound. That's awesome. Good morning. Hi. Bobby. That'd be great. Good morning. Welcome to the east side of Eleuthera. 
it's, it's right there. As of right now, I gotta say, I'm liking the decision to take the ocean routes. The swell is very minimal. That wasn't the case last night though. One of the things that I'm getting better at as a, as a person and as a sailor is we had a lot of local chop last night and the chop was like straight on the beam if we were going directly to our waypoint. And I think for the first time I realized like I don't necessarily need to go straight to the waypoint. If I just veer off by 15, 20, 25 degrees, I can get the swell more on the quarter and it's a much more enjoyable ride. And so that's what I did. We probably were going 20, 25 degrees off course for maybe four or five hours until the swell died down. And that was so worth it. We are very straight line individuals generally. How fast can we do something? How fast can we check off a box? And it was a really nice realization last night to not push everything so fast and just make sure that you enjoy the ride. It is my goal to be out there and enjoying that in 30 minutes. But first, I have to finish editing Monday's video. So we keep going at our current pace, which is a little over five and a half knots. We're gonna to get to Georgetown a little bit before sunrise, and I don't wanna try and cut through those reefs before the sun's up. So we're gonna stop for a second. Look at this water, it's insane. You get clouds in the water. I wonder what it looks like from the drone. That was really cool, but the, the wind kicked back up, so the glass is gone. I'm gonna get back underway and use this as a good a time as any to switch engines. We're five miles from our waypoint, which puts us through Eleuthera, in between Eleuthera and Cat Island. And that means we're about two miles from where the seafloor gets goes from about uh, 3,000 feet up to about 60, and then in the span of a mile, it goes back down to about 3,000 feet. Uh, so that was the one thing I wasn't sure about when we were doing this uh, this route, but the sea is still really flat, so everything should be fine. And then once we're through there, we're in the Exuma Sounds, and it's a straight shot to Georgetown from there. We'll get there in the morning. So, as you can see, no boats in sight, and it's just a really Really nice night, we're right on course, making good time. I'm using this little solar light that we have and <laughs> I feel like I should be telling you guys a ghost story right now. I actually do have a night watch creepy story. I don't think I ever told anyone this. Okay, let me tell you. On my first ever night watch, when we were coming from Fort Lauderdale to Charleston, we were trying to outrun that storm. We had our captain on board to help certify us for the insurance company. And I had anxiety through the roof. I was really questioning every decision I had ever made. I'm sitting there at the helm for my first watch. I think I came on at midnight, I'm pretty sure. So just about this time, ooh, that makes it even creepier. Okay. And I was filling out the logbook on the hour at one o'clock. So my eyes were not on the horizon. And all of a sudden, I hear this really, really faint, like whirring sound. Like, and I look at AIS and there's nothing on there. There's not a thing on the chart, not a boat anywhere in sight. And I looked over to the starboard side and there was a boat right there right there right next to us he had come out of nowhere he was super, going super super fast and approached right alongside of the boat i was so freaked out i had no idea what to do and as soon as i realized he was there he turned on this really bright light like blinding bright light at the boat i was like holy crap what is going on are we about to be boarded like who are these people? I 
nothing on AIS. I couldn't see them because of this bright light they were shining at us. Terrifying. And sorry to say, I have no answers for you. After what felt like forever, but it was probably just a couple of seconds, they turned off the light and then <sighs> word away. No idea. No idea who they were, what they were doing, what they were looking for. If you guys think that you know what that could have been, put it in the comments below. Okay, I gotta turn this light off so my night vision gets back to normal and I can do my check here in a couple of minutes. So, see you guys in the morning. Every day brings new light to help us on our way. Always taking my breath. Weather Welcome to the Exumas, guys. It is just a 4-8 and we are less than a mile from the Conk Key Cut. Thank you, dear. Welcome. Which is one of the two entrances into the Georgetown Harbor. We made really good time last night. So much so that we actually had to slow down. We wanted to get here after the sun had come up. I woke up at 4.50, unprompted, and just got up and let Charles off watch because I was so excited I couldn't sleep. Whenever I put Renner's life vest on, he faces away from me and away from the outside and pouts until I take it off. He does not like it one little bit. So this is where all the cruisers are. We saw five or six six the whole time we were in the Abacos. Looks like they're all here. <laughs> time to anchor. This is Stocking Island. We made it. Join us next week as we get to explore Stocking Island. And to make sure you don't miss it, go ahead and subscribe right now. Give us a thumbs up if you like the video and drop us a comment if you have any questions. One final note before we leave. If you need to go from Abaco to Georgetown and you just want to go straight, the ocean side of Eleuthera is not scary. It was perfect. And I would do that every single time if we had to do it again. Bye guys. Thanks for watching.